Well, um, good morning to everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, uh, whatever time it is that you are watching this video. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everybody to our course, Prof. Ed 1, uh, Child and Adolescent Learners and Learning Principles. This is your first uh, professional education course and uh, you might be wondering why you are required to take this course, this subject. Um, being future teachers, you are going to deal with learners, with pupils, with students, every day of your life as a professional teacher. From morning till afternoon, you will be with them. And everything you will do as teachers are all for the interest, all for the benefit of the learner. In order to become effective teachers, you will need, you need, we all need to understand the nature of our learners. That is one of the first requirements for being a good uh, teacher, a good facilitator of learning knowledge and understanding of the nature of our learners. In the same way that a fisherman should know everything about fishes, their behavior, their mating habits, where they feed, everything about fishes. In the same way that a farmer should know and understand everything he can about, about plants, about crops, about corn, about rice, or whatever it is that he is raising or planting. In the same way that a carpenter should know everything he can about wood, teacher should also know and understand everything they can about the learners. Because everything they do redound to the interest, the benefit, the development, the learning of the pupils or students, the learners in general. Pag ikaw magsasaka, alam mo dapat lahat ang tungkol sa palay or mais, no? In order to become an effective farmer, if you are a fisherman, you should also know as much as possible about, about feces. Ganon din tayo. As teachers, uh, we will be dealing with uh, learners every day of our lives as professional teachers. Everything we will do as teachers uh, will revolve around the uh, development of the learner. In order to prepare or design instructional materials, instructional experiences, instructional activities that will really affect uh, learning, that will facilitate effective and meaningful learning, we should know the nature of our learners, their needs, their interests, their abilities, uh, their capabilities. No. Knowing those things will enable us to uh, design instructional experiences and activities for our learners that will cater to their needs. Uh, activities and experiences that are tailored to their capabilities and abilities uh, activities that will keep them interested in the lesson. And in so doing, no, because they have that interest, they have that motivation, and the activities are geared towards their development, they will be interested, they will learn in the end. That's the whole point of what we are going to do in this course, Professional Education 1, Lear, uh, child and Adolescent Learners and Learning uh, Principles. I hope that you have already downloaded, read, and understood the uh, course policies which I have uploaded into our GC. 
I also hope that you have uh, downloaded, read, and understood the um, lineup of topics uh, I have prepared for our course. No? The series of topics you are going to have or take up for the entire uh, term. No? As already mentioned, we are going to have 10 meetings all in all in this, um, in this course no? for one term, for one whole cluster. So, I have prepared a specific topic for its meeting. I hope we can cover all of them until the end of the term. So, we are going to have a lot more discussion about uh, these uh, things that I have preliminary, uh, preliminarily uh, introduced to you and uh, discussed a little. The, the whole point of what I am trying to say at this, at this point is that this course is of foremost importance to teachers because here we will get to know the different uh, stages of development that learners go through. We will also take up the different characteristics that um, mark or distinguish each stage of development from other stages of development. Uh, in, in learning these things, we will get to know better the nature of our learners. And I have already emphasized how important that is for teachers like us. Dapat alam natin yung nature ng ating mga learners. Kasi pag alam natin kung ano yung kanilang nature, we can prepare appropriate um, learning activities and experiences for them. Kasi yung ating ipiprepare, tugma sa kanilang needs, sa kanilang experiences, sa kanilang abilities, at sa kanilang interest. How are we able to do that? Our knowledge of their nature will enable us to do that, to prepare learning activities and learning experiences, learning environment that are all consistent or congruent with their needs, interests, capabilities, abilities and experiences. So that's, that's the whole point of what I'm trying to say uh, here. No? I, I hope uh, that we already have that general idea uh, of what we are going to do uh, for the entire duration of this course. So uh, for our course objectives, uh, we will have the uh, following. At the end of the term, the students, meaning you, <laughs> should be able to first define significant constructs related to, uh, to child and adolescent development. In the course of this subject, we are going to encounter uh, terminologies that are very commonly used in the study of development, the study of learner behavior, uh, teaching principles, no? we are going to uh, encounter them, and of course, you will try to understand uh, all of them. In the end, you should be able to define them. Tell what they are, in other words. Analyze the biological and environmental factors influencing physical development and their implications to teaching and learning. The development of uh, learners, or individuals uh, in general, is uh, affected or influenced by uh, many factors. In, in our course, we will talk uh, about them and discuss them, and how each factor affects, influences, or contributes to the development of learners. Apply the principles of cognitive processing in developing learning activities intended for young and adolescent learners. So as already mentioned, we are also going to take up uh, principles of teaching and learning in this course. Uh, we will uh, see how we can prepare uh, learning activities and learning experiences for our young and adolescent learners. Okay, uh, let us proceed. Uh, another outcome we are expected to uh, 
help in this uh, subject is to analyze the development of social identity and emotions of young learners. Our pupils, our students, are not only intellectual beings, they are also social beings. Our pupils, our students, do not only have intellect, they also have emotions. And these different aspects of their personalities, intellect, social identity, their emotions, they all affect the way they learn. These are all contributory factors to their learning. And as teachers, it's part of our job to know and understand the complex process through which uh, children establish their social identity. It is part of our job as teachers to understand how they process their emotions. What's the point? Why do we need to do that? As already mentioned, these things, intellect, social identity, emotions, all contribute to learning. And so therefore, in the preparation of uh, learning experiences, meaning as we plan for our classes, as we plan the different activities and materials that we are going to use, we will take into consideration their nature in terms of intellect, social identity, emotions. It's part of their, of their nature. And so therefore, because we are dealing with a child based on his nature, our teaching should be tailored to that nature. Our teaching should be congruent with that nature of the learner. Our teaching approaches should be consistent with that nature so that we will be able to cater to their needs, their interests. We will be able to connect or relate the learning experience to their um, everyday experiences. That's the reason why we need to understand not only their intellect, but also their social identity and their emotions. Another one, uh, you are expected to demonstrate appreciation of the difficult and complex process that learners of different ages go through. We uh, have probably experienced the complexities of growing up particularly as a child and as an adult. We now understand that growing up is not an easy thing to go through. No? It's a complex process. A lot of changes are occurring around us. A lot of changes are happening within us. And uh, sometimes we find it difficult. Sometimes adolescents, children, no? find it difficult to cope with these changes. They, sometimes they find it difficult to adjust, to adapt. Sometimes they find it difficult to process, to absorb, to take in all of these changes as adults. And we already know that inability to cope and adapt to these changes may result to um, negative, uh, negative uh, things, uh, especially if the child or the adolescent does not have a strong support uh, system. His inability to cope with the changes around him may lead him to, say, vices, no? Pwedeng malulong sa bisyo. 
because of his inability to cope with the changes, the pressures, the expectations around him, especially if the support system is um, inadequate. Halimbawa, yung support ng family. There is no strong um, emotional, financial, psychological, spiritual support from the family. So the child, the adolescent, feels that he is all alone in coping with all the demands, with all the challenges, with all the complexities, with, with all the pressures of his everyday life. So what happens? He turns to his friends, who in turn leads him to vice. Pwedeng malulong sa pag-inom, sa drugs. Ang malungkot pa nito, sometimes these things can result to depression, which in turn can result to suicide. No? Mayroong mga pangyayaring ganyan. So, um, as teachers, the first thing we should understand is that growing up, no, or development in general, no, is a complex process, and not every child, not every pupil, not every student is uh, capable of coping up with all of these changes, with all of these uh, pressures and expectations. Meron mga batang nahihirapan uh, umagapay. Meron, meron mga batang nahihirapan mag-cope. Uh, sobrang pressure, sobrang expectations. Bakit hindi ka nasa honor roll? Bakit hindi ikaw ang valediktoryan? Bakit yung mga klase mo matataas ang grade? Ikaw ay, ikaw ay mababa. Bobo ka talaga. See? Masakit po yun sa bata yung ganun. Oh, lalo kung manggagaling sa kapatid, sa magulang. The family is there in the first place to lend support, to give support to the child. Uh, what happens is that the family becomes the source <laughs> becomes the source of um, uh, pressure. No? So sometimes the child turns to vice, he turns to, to, to friends for, for encouragement, for support. Mm. Sometimes the kind of support that he gets is not desirable. Sa halip na advice ng mga kaibigan, ay tuturo ng bisyo ay dahil problemado yung bata madaling madala ayon napunta sa drugs later uh, worse problems will arise because of that so mahirap din ang teacher ano po <laughs> sabi nga eh, tayo yung pangalawang parents no in loco parentis uh, kasama po yan sa trabaho natin as teachers and then, last uh, objective for the course, demonstrate deeper insights into how teaching and learning relate to child and adolescent development. So the whole point of what we are doing here is for us to become good teachers, effective teachers later. So uh, in learning the different stages of development, in learning the different characteristics of each of these stages, uh, the, 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 the goal is for us to use all of this knowledge in teaching later. Now, when, we become, when you become professional teachers, we should be able to link, to connect all of this knowledge of development to teaching. We should demonstrate deeper insights, deeper ideas, deeper understanding uh, into how uh, child and adolescent development is related to teaching and learning. Ano ang koneksyon ng dalawang yan? Child and adolescent development on one side, teaching and learning on the other side. What is the connection? Yan ang dapat nating maunawaan sa katapusan or during the process of uh, learning in our subject. Yan. So yun po ang ating mga course objectives. Uh, I hope and pray that we will be very successful 
in attaining or achieving these course objectives so that in the end of the term in the end of the at the end of the cluster uh, we will feel that we are already beginning to become well equipped to become effective teachers later okay as a future teacher you need to understand how learners develop in order to provide them with the best learning experience this is the reason why i have repeatedly said that as teachers we should know and understand the nature of our learners specifically in terms of their needs interests abilities and experiences having that knowledge will enable us to design instructional uh, activities and experiences that will um, be perfectly suited to their nature kasi alam natin yung kanyang nature eh, ano yung kanyang needs so therefore we can easily address those uh, needs uh, pedagogically speaking no? each year every academic year a new batch of learners come into our classroom and uh, these learners have different characteristics they have different personalities they have different behaviors but generally speaking children have similar needs they have similar um, interests and experiences so every batch of learners is a learning experience for us teachers uh, the more time the more years we spend in the service the more we learn about the nature of the child the nature of the learner and we can use that knowledge to our advantage as teachers the more we learn about our students development the more we can prepare for the teaching strategies and materials in our lessons so as already pointed out earlier all of this knowledge and understanding of the nature of the learner will redound to will lead to will result to effective teaching especially if we couple it that knowledge of the nature of learners if we couple it with appropriate uh, teaching uh, principles which is also part of our studies here so yun po yun and so therefore it is imperative meaning it's really very important no? that we understand our students backgrounds including their uh, personal background meaning the circumstances uh, surrounding them as persons no? social and cultural backgrounds what kind of culture do they come from what are the what is their social background these things are important for us to know and understand why again to be able to engineer meaning be, uh, to be able to design or prepare teaching strategies teaching uh, materials that will optimize or maximize learning by knowing their needs we can address their concerns and seek for appropriate support knowing the needs of our learners is one aspect of knowing them knowing their needs will enable us to prepare lessons and activities that will address those needs here's a very simple example um, you have a pupil who does not know how to read very well so yun ang kanyang need as a pupil as a learner you know that he 
has some difficulty reading. Knowing that need, what do we do now as a teacher? We try to address that. We prepare uh, remedial teaching, particularly in reading. We prepare extra materials, extra reading materials for the pupil. We prepare uh, techniques that are simple enough for him to know or learn so that he can cope with the rest of the class. Bakit natin ginagawa yon? Kasi nga alam natin yung kanyang need. The need to read well. Suppose you have a pupil who does not know how to perform simple mathematical operations. Nahirapan siya sa addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. Knowing that need, what do we do now? Well, naturally, we will prepare uh, learning experiences for him that will address his need to improve on his mathematical skills. Ay kung hindi natin alam yung kanyang need, why they, we will not be able to remediate. We will not be able to provide solutions for that problem. If he know, if, if, if the teacher know, if the teacher knows the need, the interest, and the abilities of the learner, it would be easier for him, the teacher, to prepare learning experiences and materials that will cater to those needs. That's the whole point there. No? Okay. So, in uh, the course of the subject, meaning, habang tayo nagpa-progress ba, we will encounter uh, important terminologies, as already mentioned, different constructs or concepts that are important for us to understand. The first of these terminologies is development. And it is defined as the pattern of biological, cognitive, and socio-emotional changes that begins at conception and continues throughout the lifespan. In the course of our life, we go through different um, changes. And these changes begin at conception. Conception meaning the moment the egg cell is fertilized by the sperm cell. No? That is the beginning of life. No? That is called conception. When the sperm cell fertilizes the egg cell and those two cells become one cell. Later, this cell will develop into a more, this single cell will develop into a more complex group of cells through the process of mitosis. So yung dalawang cells, sperm cell at saka egg cell, sila ay nag-unite in the process of fertilization. Conception ang tawag po doon. That is already the beginning of life. And that moment which marks the beginning of life is already the beginning of the different changes that will occur or happen to us throughout the lifespan. No? Yung mga pagbabagong yun, yung pattern na yun, we call it development. Pattern of biological, meaning pertaining to our physical body. The different changes that Mm. take place or occur in our physical body. Cognitive, yung sa ating pag-iisip. There are changes that uh, occur or happen in our ability to think, to analyze, to use our mind, in other words. no, As well as socio-emotional changes. Socio-emotional, uh, our ability to socialize, to deal with people, to mingle with people. 
There are also changes that happen to us emotionally, how we handle our emotions, the kind of emotions that we feel. These are all uh, marked by different kinds of changes. So biological, cognitive, and socio-emotional changes. May pattern po yan. Kaya nga, different people, although they develop in different ways, still follow the same pattern. Nagkakapare-pareho tayo ng pattern. Alibawa, uh, at the age of two, most people already uh, speak. Yung iba nalilate ng ilang months, yung iba naman advance ng ilang months. But generally speaking, at the age of two, we learn to speak. Or marunong na magsalita ng mga simple words, simple syllables. Pattern yan. This happens to everybody. So, these are all lumped together under the term development. The different, change, the different changes that occur in us in terms of our biological, um, the, the biological aspect of our, of our person, no? of our being, our physical body, mm. the physical changes that uh, take place. That's part of development. Cognitive changes. Uh, at first, we do not know how to analyze things. At first, we do not know how to process hypothetical propositions. But later, we already know how to do these things. Yan. Mga cognitive changes. Yan. Cognitive development. Socio-emotional changes. Uh, these are all part of uh, the process called development. And this is one construct, this is one concept, this is one terminology that we should really understand as teachers. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's take these up, important terms in the study of development. First is growth. Uh, growth refers to the physical changes that occur from conception to maturity, growth. You might uh, think that growth is uh, synonymous with development. Well, in some respects, uh, we can think of growth as development or growth as part of development. But this is, this is different uh, from, from the term development in the sense that growth refers specifically to physical changes. Physical changes. A baby gains weight. That's growth. Kasi lumaki siya eh. Uh, a child gains height. Mula sa pagiging 3 feet, kasi maliit pa siyang bata, siya ay naging 4 feet in height. That is growth. That's physical change. Uh, Nagkamasel, yung teenager, nagbarbel, naggym, nagkamasel, lumaki yung kanyang katawan. That's growth. Uh, so, as already mentioned, the term growth is generally associated with increase in size, increase in measurement, whatever it is, no size, weight, height. Basta there is an increase physically. That is growth. Tumangkad, tumaba, naging malaki. Oh, that's, that's growth. Physical changes. Development is much broader than that. Development is, the term development is much more complex than that, than growth. Kasi pag growth, physical changes lang eh. Lumaki, tumaba, ganyan. Uh, nag-develop ang mata. Yeah. Yun ang kanyang difference. Pag-development kasi it includes cognitive, socio-emotional, as well as biological changes. Pag-growth, physical changes lang. Yeah. And this, you notice, oh, growth occurs from conception to maturity. Hanggang maturity lang siya. Bakit? Because 
at a certain point, halimbawa, height, at a certain point, a person stops growing. Yung babae, halimbawa, yung babae, when she reaches the age of, say, um, what, 18, she stops growing. Ang ibig sabihin, whatever your height at the age of 18 becomes your height for the rest of your life. Ganon din sa mga lalaki. O, anong, anong age ba nag stop yung pag-grow ng lalaki? At what age does, does a man or a male or a boy stop gaining height? Meron yata mga 18 years old, tumatangkad pa eh. Ipagpalagay natin 20, no? For the sake of discussion. At the age of 20, uh, a man, a male or a boy, stops growing. Nag-mature na siya. So, his growth has stopped, but his development continues. Ang tumigil lang ay yung kanyang pagtangkad, which is growth, physical change eh. But his development continues because he continues to learn new things cognitively. He continues to learn socially. He continues to learn emotionally. Now he is able to manage his emotions better. He is now uh, able to control his outbursts better. He is now able to, to uh, deal with people better. So, it's still part of development. No? Pero tumigil na siya sa pag-grow. Kasi nga, hindi na siya tumatangkad. Kung bagay, nasagad na niya yung kanyang height. So, his growth in terms of height, ha? kasi yung hindi na siya tumatangkad, pero pwede pa rin siyang tumaba. <laughs> he has already stopped growing vertically, but he can still grow <laughs> horizontally. Hindi na siya tumatangkad, pero pwede pa siyang tumaba. It's, is it still part of growing? Uh, yes, that's still growth. Kasi physical change eh. Yung pagtaba is a form of physical change. So therefore, it is classified as growth. Yeah. So in terms of height, tumigil na siya sa pag-grow. He has already reached the, the, what do call this? the summit, no? of his, of his uh, growth in terms of height. So, hindi na siya nag-grow in terms of height, but he is still developing as a person because he is still learning so many things. So, yun ang pagkakaiba po ng growth sa development. No? Another term is aging, the deterioration of organisms, including human beings, that leads inevitably to death. We usually uh, think of aging as the accumulation of years. Diba? Ganun ang ating idea pag sinabing aging. The, accumulate, the accumulation of years. Um, alimbawa, 20 years old. After 10 years, uh, naturally, he's already 30 years old. After 15 years, he's already 45 years old. After another... Uh, 15 years, 60 years old na siya. That is usually um, our idea. That is how we usually think of aging, no? And uh, there's nothing wrong with that, no? Kasi aging, edi age, edad. Um, together with accumulation of years is the deterioration of our cells. It's a natural thing, no? It's it's uh, part of uh, being. Uh, it's part of having life. No, that is what I wanted to say. Our cells deteriorate as we grow old. So this applies to all kinds of organisms. Basta may buhay, including human beings, of course. Animals grow old; their cells deteriorate. Human beings grow old, our cells deteriorate, we become weak, we become sickly, and then inevitably, unavoidably, 
ng ibig kong sabihin ay inevitably hindi siya maaring iwasan hindi siya maaring takasan inevitable siya eh. this deterioration of organisms leads inevitably to death that is the natural consequence eh. the more we grow old the more we deteriorate our physical bodies become weaker and weaker we become sickly and then after a while we mm, get uh, sick with a disease that our body cannot uh, cannot counteract meaning we don't get cured we don't get well and eventually we die that's aging so uh, going back to development it involves growth in early life stability in early adulthood and the declines associated with aging later in life so the development of an individual uh, as we can see here has uh, three distinct uh, stages no growth in early life stability in early adulthood and the decline associated with aging later in life so in our early years in our mm, childhood years in our adolescent years this is characterized these these stages are characterized by continuous development continuous growth and then when we reach adulthood uh, these things uh, are sort of stabilize nagiging stable sila because uh, growth has reached its uh, highest point its summit development has also reached its uh, stable point but after that in the later years of our life we decline we decline physically we decline cognitively kaya nga yung mga matatanda usually they suffer from uh, cognitive develop uh, no no cognitive development cognitive um, difficulties old people have difficulties remembering things no si lolo, si lolo at si lola ay nagiging makakalimutin yung iba nga ay nagiging ulyanin no uh, in some extreme cases they develop um, mental illnesses no may mga alzheimers uh, ano pa yung iba mga parkinsons usually associated with cognitive decline no uh, these things really happen no because of aging it's it's uh, it's a sad uh, thing to behold but it's part of it's part of being alive it's part of life no we grow we stabilize we we decline we deteriorate wala namang tao na habang tumatanda 80 o 90 anos ay doon lalong lumakas mas malakas pa nung siya ay 20 or 30 years old uh, <laughs> that does not happen hindi yun, hindi yun ganun mga kapatid <laughs> uh, although we see people who are still healthy and strong uh, at the age of 80, 85 uh, but generally there is already deterioration no? that's a part of nature that's the natural thing to expect from from human beings no? so yun yun growth aging development what else do we have maturation from the word mature the unfolding of an individual according to a plan contained in the genes through which the hereditary characteristics are passed from parents to child at conception okay um san maganda magumpisa dito genes genes are the carriers of heredity no genes are contained in the chromosomes 
which in turn are contained in the cell. Yeah. Uh, each individual, each person, ako, ikaw, tayong lahat bawat isa sa atin, is made up of uh, 46 yata, 46 chromosomes. Eh. For each cell, ha? Uh, 43 from the sperm cell or from the father and hindi pala 43 kundi 23 46 ang total eh mali naman yung ating mathematics 23 from the sperm cell or from the father 23 from the egg cell or from the mother you put them all together in the process of fertilization so yung 23 from the father and 23 chromosomes from the mother contained in the sperm cell and egg cell nagiging 46 chromosomes doon sa isang sperm ay uh, isang isang cell na nabuo di ba kanina dalawang cells muna sila sperm cell galing siyempre sa tatay mayroon siyang 23 chromosomes. Egg cell, mayroon siyang 23 chromosomes. At the moment of fertilization, these two cells become one. Yung dalawang cells ay nagiging isa lang. Ang tawag na sa kanya ngayon ay zygote. No? Zygote. The fertilized cell. Eh, dahil 23 na chromosomes from the sperm cell, 23 chromosomes din from the egg cell, pinagsama sila into one cell, that one cell now has 46 chromosomes. Yun. So kapag nag-divide yun, yung isang cell magiging dalawa yun, yung dalawa magiging apat through the process of mitosis. So, bawat isang cell mayroong 46 chromosomes. So, dadami nang dadami yung cells, no? Later, they will group uh, themselves into organs. Yung isang group of cells magiging heart, yung isang group of cells magiging lungs, yung isang group of cells magiging... Yung ganun, hanggang mabuo yung tao. After nine, after nine months, in the mother's womb, she will deliver a baby. Yun, that is how we start as, as, as persons. No? So, um, going back to maturation, unfolding of an individual according to a plan. The genes which are contained in the chromosomes, which in turn are contained in the cells, are the carriers of heredity. No? The, the genes um, carry the characteristics of the parents and transfer them to the offsprings. Yeah. Heredity yan, di ba? The transfer of the parents' characteristics to the offspring or children. Nangyayari yan kasi ang carriers of heredity ay genes. Yung pag-unfold niya, yung, what's unfolding? Yun bang the, the, uh, the revelation, the the series of events, the series of happenings and occurrences, occurrences leading to the uh, uh, completeness, the fullness of development. Yan. Maturation yan. Kaya nga pag sinabi natin, itong tao, itong taong ito, matured na. Ang, ano ang ibig natin sabihin? He has fully developed in terms of dealing with people, um, managing or controlling his emotions, uh, the way he thinks about things, malawak siyang mag-isip at malalim, ang tawag natin mature niya. So, he has reached that maturation age cognitively. Ayan, cognitively. So, yung ating ibang mga aspects of development, uh, cognitive development, emotional development, physical development, meron ding mga peak yan. Mga, meron mga peak uh, Yung, yung pag-unfold, going to the peak 
or the highest point that's maturation the, the, the entire process no? the entire process uh, through which uh, full development is achieved or attained that's what we call maturation okay okay here's another term we should uh, understand as teachers learning the process through which experience brings about relatively permanent changes in thoughts feelings or behavior any kind of change in thoughts feelings or behavior can be called learning uh, of course the kind of change that we are after here is change for the better kasi ang isang individual ay pwede siyang magbago but for the worse nagbago nga siya pero sa halip na mapabuti ay napasama <laughs> that is also change and uh, in some respects no we can also call that learning halimbawa yung isang teenager na hindi naninigarilyo naturoan ng barkada naman ni Garillo. Is there a change? Yes, there is a change. Because he, he did not smoke before. Now, he is a smoker. So therefore, there, there has been change in his behavior. Can we call that learning? Yes, we can, we can call that learning. We can say that the child learned how to smoke. Question, is that the kind of learning that we are after as teachers? Of course not. That's the kind of learning that is learning for the worse. Yeah. As teachers, we will be after learning for the better. There will be changes in thoughts. There will be changes in feelings. There will be changes in behavior. But they are all for the better. Papunta sa mabuti papunta sa kabutihan halimbawa behavior um, hindi dati nag exercise <laughs> ay naturoan sa PE nag exercise na siya hindi marunong dati sumayaw ngayon ay marunong na that is a very good change in behavior no? change in feelings so for example children who do not appreciate who do not appreciate the value of trees. Kala nila, basta kahoy lang yan. But, as a very good teacher, you were able to open their eyes regarding the value, regarding the importance of trees in the environment. How they help keep the air we breathe clean and fresh. How they give us some fruits. How they give us shade. How they give us wood. So, there will be changes in their feelings. Bef whereas before, they did not see the value of trees. Now, they already know the value and importance of trees. And so, therefore, they, they love trees already. See? There's change in feelings. Puro papunta yan sa kabutihan. Changes in thoughts. Alimbawa, sa knowledge. Uh, hindi dati marunong mag-multiply. Ay bang ayok ang teacher na turuan mong mag-multiply? Ba? There is change in knowledge for the better. Dati sila ay hindi nila alam yung demokrasya. But because you are a very effective social studies teacher, you were able to open their minds regarding the meaning, the value, the importance of democracy. These are all examples of learning. There is change, relatively permanent change in the child in terms of his knowledge, in terms of his thoughts, in terms of his feelings or behavior. And this will all come about through the learning experiences that the teacher has prepared for the learner. That is why, going back to what I was saying just a while ago, it is really very important that we know the nature of our learners. In preparing 
topics, in preparing lessons, in preparing instructional materials, in preparing learning activities and experiences, we will be able to tailor all of these things so that they will fit the experiences of the learners. They will fit their needs, their abilities, and their interests. So the lesson, the activities become important, valuable to the learners because this is their life that you are talking about. This, this is part of their experiences. They can see themselves as part of this, of this lesson, of this activity. They can relate very closely to the lessons and activities. They see how this can be applied to their daily life. They see how these lessons can help them solve everyday problems. They see how these lessons can make them better persons. Paano natin magagawa yan na makapag-prepare tayo ng mga lessons and activities na ganun? By knowing the nature of the learners and certain principles of teaching. That is the whole point of this subject. That is the whole point of this course. And that is part of our objectives um, for our subject. Okay. okay, here's another one. Environment. All the external physical and social conditions and events that can affect us. The environment significantly affects learning. Okay. So usually when we speak of environment, within the context of teaching and learning, we usually think of the classroom. And that is understandable, no? Because usually teaching and learning uh, takes place or occurs inside the classroom. But what we should understand here, my dear students, is that uh, the term environment does not only refer to uh, the classroom, but all external physical and social conditions surrounding the teaching learning experience. Remember, huh? external physical and social conditions. Say, for example, unahin natin itong external physical conditions. Sa classroom muna tayo. What kind of classroom do you have? Is it comfortable for, for the learners? Is there enough Hmm, ventilation? Is there enough light? Baka ang dilim, hindi nila makita yung kanila mga textbooks. Um, do they have um, their own chairs? Do they have their own tables? Or they are crowded and congested? All of these things affect learning. The physical condition of the surroundings or the environment significantly affects learning. Kahit kayo, kahit tayo, di ba? We, we will not learn uh, effectively, we will not learn very well if we are um, in, in a very uncomfortable uh, classroom. If the, if the physical environment is not conducive to learning, if there is no adequate ventilation, so instead of listening to the teacher and participating in the activities, we will just keep on fanning ourselves. Sa halip na makinig, eh, magpapaypay na lang tayo na magpapaypay. Todo pang gaos, eh. Baha na ng pawis sa paligid mo, eh. How will you learn? Or, there is not enough light. Hindi mo makita yung textbook, hindi mo mabasa yung nasa blackboard. Or, the, the, the surrounding is very noisy. Uh, limbawa, may mga sasakyan na dumadaan. O aeroplano, helikopter. Because you are near the airport. <laughs> or malapit sa release ng train. Ay. Yon. So, these are all examples of physical uh, environment. Ano naman yung social environment or social conditions? This refers to the relationship of uh, everyone involved in the teaching learning process. The relationship between the teacher and the student. Uh, the relationship between the students and Mm, their own classmates, no? A relationship between the teacher and other teachers. So you see, these are all social conditions. 
Alimbawa, the teacher is very, very strict and um, the, the, the students cannot even ask questions. That will affect learning. Instead of being able to ask questions, they will be afraid and they will just keep quiet even if they have questions in their mind. Even if they want to clarify something, they will just clump up. They will just keep quiet. Why? They are afraid to ask because the teacher is uh, not approachable at all. <laughs> the teacher does not entertain questions uh, in an amicable, in an amiable way. As a matter of fact, the teacher embarrasses or humiliates students who ask questions. Kasi challenge siya, nahirapan siyang sumagot. See? That kind of environment will affect learning, which is an example of social, uh, social condition. The general atmosphere, no? The general social and emotional atmosphere that prevails over the class. That is part of the um, learning environment. So basta nasa labasa, whether it is, whether it is uh, physical, whether it is social, whether it is emotional, all of these things affect uh, learning. And uh, needless to say, uh, teachers should provide the most favorable, the most conducive uh, environment for the learners, whether it's physical, whether it is social, whether it is emotional, whether it is psychological, the best environment uh, that the teacher can, can, can provide uh, to the learner should be given to them. That is part of our responsibility as, uh, as teachers. No? Kaya lang kuminsan, eh, yun lang ang nakaya ng classroom, uh, medyo kulang ang ventilation, ay, gawa na lang ng paraan. <laughs> So, with regards to process, processes and periods in development, we have uh, the following. First, biological processes. When we speak of biological processes, this involve changes in the child's physical body. I think we have already touched on this a little a while ago. No? Uh, when we speak of biological processes, this usually refer to uh, changes or processes involving the uh, physical body. Genetic inheritance plays a large part. You will notice that um, if the parents are, say, tall, there is a greater likelihood that the offsprings or children are also tall. Although this does not happen in all cases, generally speaking, uh, children uh, inherit the physical char characteristics of their parents, no? generally speaking. This applies to height, body structure, color of the eyes, color of the hair, these are all parts of biological processes. Um, another one is cognitive processes. This involves the child's thinking, intelligence, and language. So, as the child undergoes, as, as the child goes through the different um, stages of development biologically or physically, his intelligence uh, also changes. The child's ability to think, the child's ability to use language, uh, his cognitive abilities, in other words, also undergo changes. And uh, this, these uh, processes go, go together. As the child grows physically, his cognitive ability also uh, improves or develops. Magkasabayan eh. And then we also have the socio-emotional socio processes. Merong naghuhukay sa labas class. 
Uh, I don't know if the microphone can pick up the sound. <laughs> Sana hindi, no? Sana hindi nagkakaestorbo sa ating recording. Meron kasi nagtatrabaho sa labas. So, uh, going back to our lesson. Uh, Socio-emotional processes. Yung sa biological processes, this involves the physical body. Yung pagtangkad, paglaki, pagbabago ng boses sa, sa mga lalaki when he reaches puberty, no? di ba, nayagong kagboses. Sa mga babae naman, the, the, the change in the shape of their bodies, no? These are all part of uh, biological processes, biological development. Yan. Sa cognitive processes, yung pagbabago sa ability to think, ability to process information, uh, the ability to use language, and the child's intelligence, nagbabago din yan. In addition to those two sets of processes, we also have the socio-emotional processes. Ano naman ito? This refers to the child's emotional relationships with other people. Changes in emotion, changes in personality. Uh, at first, no, mapapansin natin ito sa mga babies, no? They, they are not very good at managing their emotions. If, it, if we do not give them what they want, Alimbawa, food or a certain toy, what do they do? They cry because they are not yet mm, matured enough to manage or control their emotion. As we grow older, we become better at controlling our emotions. We do not cry anymore if somebody does not give us food. <laughs> Hindi na rin tayo naglalaro kasi matured na tayo eh. Oh, it's it's <laughs> napakapangit naman kung napakapangit naman tingnan kung 40 anyos ka na umiiyak ka pa dahil hindi ka nabigyan ng merienda hindi ka nabigyan ng barbidal so that kind of emotion that kind of behavior is only for children so as we progress as we develop uh, as we grow older our socio-emotional um, uh, de development also progresses until we reach uh, the level of maturity. Our personality also changes. No? Meron mga tao na nung bata ay baltikon, later mabait na sila. Or the opposite, no? dati mabait, nung lumaki na ay uh, magagaliti na. So these are all part of growing up, these are all part of development, and as already mentioned, as teachers, it is of foremost importance that we um, understand all of them. No? The processes and periods in development. So we have three, biological processes, cognitive processes, socio-emotional processes. Okay, let's continue. Um, as already mentioned before, uh, individuals uh, develop in different um, ways and rates. And that is why children who belong to the same age bracket or age level may differ in certain features or characteristics. That is why, halimbawa, parehong 11 years old. Yung isa, mas matangkad kaysa doon sa isa. Hmm. Mas mataba naman yung isa kaysa doon sa isa. Okay. So, people different, uh, people develop in different ways and rates. However, as also pointed out earlier, development follows a pattern. And this pattern applies to every individual. Alimbawa, in terms of stages, the first stage is prenatal, then infancy, early adult, early childhood, late childhood, and so on and so forth. Every individual passes through each of these stages in the same order or sequence. 
Nobody develops in such a way that he starts with the prenatal stage, proceed to adolescence, go back to infancy, then proceed to midlife, then go back again to early child. It, it does not happen that way. So every individual follows this uh, pattern of development. He follows this sequence of stages of development. Although nagkakaiba-iba nga sa paraan ng pag-develop at sa bilis. Uh, some 10-year-old girls can be bigger than 10-year-old boys. Yeah. But later, the boys will outgrow the girls. Mas matangkad naman sila, mas mababa yung babae. That seems to be the pattern. No? In the early years, girls uh, tend to grow faster than boys. Kaya nga sa elementary, alimbawa grade 3, 4, 5, mas maraming babae, mas matangkad kaysa lalaki. No? May, uh, most girls are taller than boys. But after several years, the girls seem to stagnate in terms of growth, in terms of uh, increase in height. Pero yung mga lalaki, tuloy-tuloy. So, boys begin to outgrow the girls. Nakukan sila, mas, nat, mas natataasa na. Meaning, mas matangkad na yung mga lalaki. This, this is part of the pattern. And um, this pattern applies to everybody regardless of culture, regardless of political or economic background. So, Ganun yun, nagkakapare-pareho tayo in terms of stages, in terms of pattern. So, going back to our topic, no? uh, the different stages of development are as follows. Prenatal, no? you can see that in the table. No? Prenatal, infancy, early childhood, late childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, midlife, and then late life. All right. So each of these stages has its own um, period, meaning uh, parang pinaka time frame niya, no? And also its major features. So isesahin natin. Sa prenatal stage, which begins from conception. Ano nga ulit yung conception? The moment the sperm cell fertilizes the egg cell, the two cells become one cell. That's the moment of conception. And it also marks the beginning of life. Okay. So the prenatal, alam na natin yung meaning ng prenatal, no? Pre, before. Natal, birth. So these are the um, things that occur in the individual before he is actually delivered by his mother or her mother before birth, prenatal. So conception to birth. Physical development. Mayroon ang physical development even before a child is actually born. Diba na kwento ko na kanina? The, the development of the different organs, the different parts of the body, uh, these are all changes that occur during the prenatal stage. We cannot see these changes because they occur inside the mother's womb. Maliban na lang maglagay ka ng camera doon sa, sa, loob, ng, <laughs> sa loob ng womb ng nanay. No? They can already do that. No? They can put cameras inside inside the mother's womb and take pictures, even videos of the baby inside. No? They can already do that. Kaya nga mayroong mga pictures ng mga babies while they are still inside the mother's womb. Ganun na po tayo kahitek. So going back, prenatal stage of development starts from conception to birth. And the major features are the physical changes, the physical development, the development of the different parts of the body, the different parts of 
uh, I mean the different organs uh, inside the body, things like those. Then this is followed by infancy, which starts from birth at full term to about 18 months. Oh. About, ibig sabihin, hindi naman ito eksakto na down to the last day, ibibilangin mo yung 18 months. These are just uh, these are just estimates, no? Kaya nga nilagyan nila ng about. As a matter of fact, this uh, might even differ from an individual to another. Katulog nga ng pagsasalita, di ba? As our example before. Some children um, speak uh, at an earlier age than others. Yung iba, kwan pa lang eh, um, mga one year and a half, halimbawa ay mga 18 months. Magsasalita na yung iba eh. Syllables, simple words. No? Meron ganyan. Meron namang medyo late yung kanyang development. Mag mga two years and three or four or five months na siya nagsalita. So these are just approximates. No? These are just estimates. Pero at least meron tayong pagbabasihan na from birth up to approximately 18 months, infancy period yan. What happens here? Locomotion is established. Locomotion yung kanyang paggalaw. Uh, rudimentary language. So you see? Rudimentary language. Single syllable words. Ma, pa, tai, nai. Or ma, mam. Yan usual lang unang sinasabi ng mga bata. No? Social attachment. The child recognizes the parents, the siblings, the people inside the house and establishes um, emotional and social uh, bond with them. Yan. Yan ang nangyayari sa infancy. In early childhood, which lasts about from 18 months to about 6 years, language is already well established. Ibig sabihin, uh, the, the, the child can now speak uh, fluently, uh, specifically or especially his first language, whether it is uh, English, whether it is Tagalog, whether it is Bisaya. Depende kung ano yung first language niya. The language that he learns first inside the home. At this point, he is already um, able to speak uh, properly or even fluently using that language. Sex typing. Ano pa itong sex typing? Sex typing is recognition of one's um, one's uh, sex. Kung lalaki siya or babae siya, alam na niya, naiintindihan na niya. And that, that knowledge will uh, enable him to do uh, things that the family expects of him as a male, the family expects of her as a female. Mm. Mayroong mga expectations ang family. And that is the first environment that the child usually have or get. So kapag ang bata ay lalaki, ang bibilhing laruan ni tatay ay mga baril-barilan, bola. In other words, toys for boys. Kapag ang anak naman ay babae, ang bibilhin ni nanay ay Barbie doll, uh, yung ibang klaseng manika, yung mga, yung mga toys for girls. Yan. So these uh, expectations from the family will reinforce the child's understanding of his own sex, of his own knowledge that he is male, of her own knowledge that she is female. Yeah, sex typing yan. Group play. All right. Uh, th this is the time when the child begins to establish um, um, relationships with with uh, people outside the family. No? Pag six years old na, gusto yan makipaglaro na sa labas. <laughs> he is no longer. Uh, contented with just the people around him or her at home. The child begins to look for playmates. The child begins to look for friends outside the family. 
outside the home. Yeah. So nag-uumpisa na siyang makipag-socialize sa ibang bata outside the immediate family. This ends with readiness for schooling, no? Early childhood. In our new curriculum, uh, a child formally enters uh, elementary at the age of six, five nga eh, five years old, nagkikinder na siya, no, kindergarten. At the age of six, he enters grade one. Ayan. Nung dati kasi seven years old eh, ngayon six years old na lang. Siguro later, no, maybe in the future, ibababa uli yan sa five years old. <laughs> kasi madaling magmature yung mga bata ngayon, no? They, they easily matured because they are taught at home. Mm, they are exposed to the mass media where they can learn things. No? May natututuhan dyan ang mga bata. Eh. Kaya madali, sila, madali silang magmature. Okay, let's proceed. Late childhood from about 6 years old to about 13 years old. Yan. You will see that this corresponds to the uh, elementary years, no? Uh, itong late childhood. This roughly corresponds to the elementary years. So what happens here? Many cognitive processes become adult except in speed of operation. They, they are already beginning to manifest the, 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 the emotional and cognitive abilities of an adult. But it still lacks speed of operation. Meaning, halimbawa, in terms of cognitive processing, in, uh, itong cognitive processing class is simply processing information using our mind. Pag sinabi kasing cognitive, it refers to the mind. Eh. It refers to our ability to think. It's a refer it refers to our ability to remember. It refers to our ability to memorize, to analyze, to apply principles. Lahat ng ginagawa ng ating utak, we call that cognitive processing. So, during the late childhood, many cognitive processes become adult, except in speed of operation. As I was saying just a while ago, at this particular age, children begin to manifest or show or display cognitive abilities as young adults, except that uh, it still lacks speed of operation. In other words, medyo mabagal pa, no? They, they, they can do it slowly. Uh, and as they grow older, as they develop more, these cognitive processes become mm, more automatic, more, more second nature to them. Mm. So they can now process information faster. Uh, habang sila ay nagmamature pa lalo. Okay, let's proceed to adolescence. About 13 to about 20 years old. Mm. So, what happens here? Parang ito naman yung nagko-correspond sa college years. Ah, no? ba? Begins with puberty, ends at maturity, attainment of highest level of cognition. Independence from parents, sexual relationships. Maraming nangyayari dito sa adolescence uh, period. And that is why it is commonly said that uh, the adolescence uh, period is one of the most um, tumultuous <laughs> stages of development. One of the most um, problematic, you know. It, 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 it really, what do I call this? It really presents complexities to the individual which makes it difficult for him or her to adapt, to adjust, to cope with these um, myriad changes that are occurring and happening all at the same time. There are changes physically, there are changes psychologically, there are changes emotionally. No? Unahin natin. It begins with puberty. Puberty is that age in development where the person becomes capable of, of reproduction. Yun usually ang definition ng puberty. 
kapag ang isang babae ay maaari ng mabuntis, nasa puberty age na siya. Kapag ang lalaki ay maaari ng mambuntis, siya ay nasa puberty age na. They, they are now capable of reproduction. Sa babae, madaling madetermine. It's easy for uh, for females to determine whether they have reached that stage. When they when they begin to menstruate, no, that is the signal that they are ready to reproduce. Sa lalaki, dahil wala naman tayong menstruation, ay uh, hindi ko alam kung paano malalaman. Uh, siguro, depende sa experience, no? I, I have seen... Uh, 14-year-old boys or 15-year-old boys na naka, nakabuntis ng babae. So, as early as that age, nasa puberty age na sila. Kasi they can already impregnate a woman. No? So, this puberty ends in maturity, meaning the full, the, the full development of, of, their, uh, of their capacities and abilities as persons. During the adolescence period or stage of development, they also attain the highest level of cognition. Um, this is the stage where they are at the very best uh, level of, of their intellect. They, they are at the very highest level of, of uh, processing information, whether it is simple recall or simple memorization, whether it's analysis, whether it's uh, application of principles, or whether it is um, uh, how else do we do we process information? Whether it is creating uh, something new out of a given set of information, nasa highest level na sila, and then after that, uh, na yan sila, mag steady doon, mag steady. And then after a while, deterioration will uh, come in. Diba sa pattern natin kanina? Growth, stability, decline. <laughs> so in the adolescence period, we reach the highest attainment of maturity or uh, highest attainment of cognition. Mag-steady yan dyan. Also in this, um, stage, uh, adolescents usually gain independence from parents. In uh, our culture as Filipinos, uh, this uh, comes at a later uh, part in life, especially economically speaking. At the age of 20, Many Filipinos are still living with their parents. At the age of 20, uh, parents still support the education, the everyday needs of an individual, of their child. Sometimes, even if the child is already married, he or she still stays with the parents. So, hindi natin yung matatawag na independence from parents. Uh, that is part of the Filipino culture, no? Sometimes, even if you are already 30, 35 years old, you still live with your parents. And that's okay with us kasi kasama sa kultura natin yun, eh. But, uh, in other cultures, uh, they have a different way of uh, dealing with that. No? Meaning, relationship between parents and children in terms of in terms of where they stay. Sa iba kasi, halimbawa sa Americans, when you reach the age of 18, uh, you separate from your parents. You live on your own. You may receive allowance from your parents, but you live in a separate house. Sexual relationships also come in during the adolescence uh, period. This is the time 13 to 20 years old, no? This is the time when uh, teenagers or adolescents enter into uh, 
relationships with uh, usually the opposite sex, no? Kung ikaw ay lalaki, maniligaw ka para magkaroon ka ng girlfriend. Kung ikaw naman ay babae, matatanggap ka ng manliligaw para magkaroon ka ng boyfriend. If you are a man, and you also like men, ay problema na yun. Mag, paano ka maghahanap ng jowa mo? If you are a woman, and you also like other women, ay problema mo na rin kung paano ka maghahanap ng jowa mo. This kind of uh, relationships are now uh, very common and they, they, they seem to be okay with the society. No? Our society has already begun to acknowledge and accept this kind of relationships. As a matter of fact, uh, even here in our country, there are certain sectors that are, that are um, lobbying for the legalization of same-sex marriage. Well, whatever. Bahala kayo sa buhay nyo. Kung anong, anong klaseng relationships ang gusto nyo. The, the point here is that during the adolescence period, uh, these kinds of relationships occur. It is part of our nature as human beings no? to, to search or to seek um, relationships like this. No? They, 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 we we need relationships like this to complete ourselves. No? Parang napakalungkot na hanggang tumandat mamatay ay solo ka lang sa buhay. Okay, so, so ganun yun. We, we, we search for relationships. Oh. Okay, let us proceed to the next. Young adulthood. From about 20 years old to about 45 years old. The major features or the main focus of this stage is career and family. Career and family development. At the age of uh, 20 to 45, no, or halimbawa, somewhere in the middle, 35 or 40 years old, um, people are expected to already have his or her own career or profession or occupation, no, whatever it is. Basta, yung edad na yan, parang napakapangit naman kung you are already 45 years old, and you still de- depend on your parents for, for all your needs. <laughs> diba? 40 anos, 45 years old. Nanay, pahingi po ng pera, bibili po ako ng soft drinks. 45 years old. Eh kung may bisyo pa, oh, 45 years old. Nanay, pahingi po ng pera, uh, pahingi po ng 12 pesos. Ano na mo anak? Bibili po ako ng may tipula. <laughs> anak ng dalagang baka. Nagbisyo pa. 45 years. <laughs> In this stage, <laughs> ah, people are also expected to have their own family. No? Pag 45 years old ka na at ah, wala ka pang asawa, you do not have your own family, ah, People will ask you, but hindi ka pa nag asawa you're already 45 years old, you do not have a wife, you do not have children, you do not have your own family. Tapos idudugtong niya, mahirap yung tumatanda nang walang nag-aalagang pamilya. O, diba? Ganyan tayong mga Pilipino, no? But in some other cultures, it's, it's, just, it's perfectly normal, no? 45 years old, 50 years old, 65 years old, single, they don't give, they, they, they don't, what do you call this? They do not pressure the person. Basta, yun ang gusto niyong buhay. Eh. Tayo lang mga Pilipino, we are very particular with, with age and what you should have at that particular age. No? O ano ka ba naman, 25 years old ka na, hindi ka pa-graduate. Ay, pasok tanan sa earth. Ay, gusto kong graduate ng 45 years old. Doon pakialam mo sa buhay ko. Di ba? Pero sa ating kultura, ay, ganun talaga na. No? And um, that is part of growing up. It's still part of development. You have to 
you have to consider these expectations from family, from, from people, and from society. No? You do not have to conform, but it's there. Bahala ka kung paano mong ipaprocess. If you really don't want to conform to expectations, that is your right as a person. Kung ayaw mo, ay, hindi ka naman pinipilit, pero nandyan yan, yung mga expectations. Uh, proceed tayo sa midlife, about 45 to 65 years old. Ba, ay, kung na ito tala, midlife na talaga. <laughs> yung iba nga, hindi na umaabot ng 65. Eh, so, so, hindi na yun sa kanila midlife. End life na. <laughs> career reaches highest level. Dito yung mga promotions, nandito yung mga realization of our full potentials as persons. No? Self-assessment, we reflect on our life uh, during this uh, stage. Although we can also reflect on our life at any stage, what, I, what I, we are saying here is uh, most people uh, begin to really reflect on the life that they have lived so far uh, during this stage. Diyan tayo karaniwang nag muni muni regarding our life. What have I done with my life? What have I achieved? Uh, have I identified my purpose? What's the meaning of life for me? Have I lived my life well so far? These questions um, arise during this uh, stage, about 45 to 65. All of these things can happen. These questions can arise earlier. Karamihan lang ba dito nangyayari? Ano yung emptiness? Bakit naging empty yung nest? <laughs> Kasi po, dito sa mga panahong ito, our children leave us to live their own lives. Sa panong ito, gumagraduate ang mga anak. Pagka-graduate niyan, they will begin to look for work. The, mo the moment they find one, they stay, of course, no, they will stay where they work. And then after a while, they will get married. And of course, they will, they, they will have their own family, they will have their own home, they will have their own house, and they will live separately. Diba ganyan ang nangyayari sa family? Even if you have five children, all of them will leave you later. All of them will leave us later. Because they will have their own families. So the home, the nest, becomes empty except for the father and the mother. <laughs> yung bahay na dati ay magulo at ang ingay-ingay because of the children. When they play, when they quarrel, ang ingay. After a while, silence. It's now very quiet because the children have all graduated. They are now working in some far places where they will eventually get married and eventually settle down. See? The nest becomes empty. Kaya medyo malungkot din itong part na ito, no? Tatawagan na lang yan ang mga anak, kumusta ka anak? Pag maalala ka ng anak, kumusta ka tatay? Kumusta kayo ni nanay? <laughs> then pag may dadalin sa ospital, yun, uuwi yung isa, dalawang anak. Oh. <laughs> Retirement also takes place here. 60 years old, mong may nagre-retire na. Ako, when, when, we, when, when I reach the age of 60, I'm planning to retire. <laughs> Kasi sa teacher, um, 60 ay optional retirement yan. Kung gusto mong mag-retire, pwede. Kung gusto mong hindi mo na mag-retire, continue serving, pwede rin. Pagdating ng 65 years old, forced retirement age na. Whether you like it or not, you have to retire from the service. Sagad ka na, men, 65. So, kung magre-retire ako ng 60, aba, medyo tagal-tagal pa yun, no? <coughs> uh, 
uh, almost five years pa. Sobrang five years pero kulang na five years. Kasi I'm already, I, I'm turning 56 this coming November. So pagdating ng November, I, ako ay 56 years old. Mayroon pang four years bago mag-60. <laughs> so four years pa bago mag mag-retire. Nasa midlife na daw ako, sabi ng ating table. <laughs> Hindi pa naman kami emptiness kasi yung anak kong lalaki nandoon pa sa bahay. Nag-aaral yun ng kolehiyo sa Maynila ay online naman sila. Dahil sa COVID, so yun, magkasama kami. Let's, <laughs> let us proceed sa late life. About 65 years old to, na ito ang malungkot, to death. He enjoys family achievements. Uh, Ine-enjoy na lang ni Lolo at ni Lola yung naging achievements nila as, as a family. Graduate ang mga anak, may trabaho lahat, uh, may mga families na rin. Yung mga apo nila nag-aaral lahat. Yung ganun ba? No? Dependency. Ito ang malungkot plus. No? Dependency. Um, because the couple who have already retired uh, are no longer working and living on their pension, which uh, may be enough or not enough, depending on their uh, pension, depending on their salary when they were still working. But uh, often, often times, um, parents uh, still have to ask for some help from from their children. No? This happens, no? Uh, lalo kung, halimbawa, hindi ka naman professional, you are a, a, a worker, halimbawa, no? So, wala kang pension. <laughs> so, pagtanda, you can no longer work, you depend on your children. No? Anak, uh, wala kaming pambili ng yung, yung gatas ba ng matanda? Nakalimutan ko yung, yung pangalan niya. Wala kami pambili ng vitamins. Uh, ibili mo naman kami ng, ng Centrum, yung Silver Advanced. <laughs> Kawawa na, no? Dependent na, sa, dependent na sila sa kanilang mga anak. Uh, because they can no longer work, they're already old. Uh, hindi ito masyadong malungkot if the children will take care of the parents. Uh, Akong bahala tayo sa emo vitamins, ninro ni nanay. At saka bibigyan ko rin kayo ng pambilin nyo ng food. Ako magbabayad ng kuryente, ilaw, bahay, kung walang sariling bahay. No? Masaya yung ganon. Pero kung walang magsusupport na anak, ay, yun ang malungkot. No? Uh, that is the reason why uh, we should provide for our old age, no? Habang kumikita, habang malakas pa, we should uh, think of our twilight years. We should think of those years where we can no longer work, we can no longer gain income. Uh, siguro dapat mag-save para sa mga panahon yun, no? Or mag-invest. Uh, bahala na kayo kung paano kayo mag prepare for those years. Matagal pa naman kayo eh. Bata pa kayo. Kami lang nag-iisip ng ganyan. <laughs> We're already approaching retirement age. <laughs> Widowhood. Ito, malungkot din. No? Widow. Nagiging, nagiging balo. Kasi usually, itong mga edad na ito, talagang, this is already the years where we expect our life to, to end. Or, kung hindi man mag-end, this is the stage of life where we can no longer expect too many years more here on earth. <laughs> Pag 65 years old na ay, hindi ka na makakaasa na aabot ka pa ng mga 30 years more or 35 years more. Or... Although may mga umaabot ng ganyang edad na 85, 90, si Enrile yata, 93 na eh. O 93 or sobrang na yata si Enrile. 97, parang ganyan. Ang tibay ni Manong, no? Sana all. Umabot kaya tayo. <laughs> De, balik tayo sa late life. Generally speaking, no, kung titingnan natin, itong edad na ito, this is where we expect our 
our life to end uh, in, in a few years. <laughs> Parang bihira na yung umaabot ngayon ng, ng mga 75, mga 80, ah, ganun. So anyway, uh, we're not talking about uh, about uh, anything else but uh, the definite stages or pattern of development. No? So yung mga stages natin, yun ulit. Prenatal, infancy, early childhood, late childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, midlife, late life. Yeah. Eight stages of uh, development uh, all in all. Uh, we identified the approximate or estimated uh, years or age when they start and when they stop. Mga approximates lang yan, ha? And then we also talked about the major features, the major developments, the major changes, the major characteristics of each of these uh, states of development.